Good evening, Vinyl community. Hi, I hope everyone is doing really well out there. Uh, Rob back for uh, another quick video, uh, just a catch up, really, uh, catch up video um, of some finds. Um, but uh, just a couple that I actually missed out uh, last time that uh, slipped through the net somehow. Um, and a couple of CDs actually as well uh, that uh, I've managed to um, managed to pick up. And uh, yeah, starting off though, um, uh, had a nice surprise uh, in the uh, in the post the other day. Um, Martin Parrott uh, did a video uh, quite recently, um, just showing some finds that he had from uh, the um, uh, recent Reading uh, record fair, which uh, sadly, unfortunately, I, I I couldn't go to for various reasons. Um, but um, yeah, one of the uh, one of the records that he picked up there um, uh, was uh, an album by uh, a group called Parchment, and uh, a folk. Uh, we described it as sort of folk acid, um, and uh, I just commented that uh, um, I said, "Oh, that sounds something that would be up my street," and um, didn't think for one minute that he'd. Uh, He'd gift it to me, um, but yeah, he, he messaged me, bless him, and said, uh, yeah, you still at the same address, and I'll be happy to send it along. And lo and behold, he did indeed. So this is the uh, this is the record itself. So anybody who saw um, Martin's video will obviously be, and um, some of you may well be aware of this anyway, um, I wasn't aware of them. Um, they are a Christian folk band um uh from the 70s i think this was 1975 i think this came out and are oh, recorded at grosvenor studios in birmingham so interesting um i think i recall Mar martin saying that this guy here is the uh is is the bats the band de facto sort of band leader and uh is the m m responsible for writing i think most of the material um, and yeah, I mean, I, I stuck it on uh, this afternoon, and, and, it, and it's 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 a decent listen. Um, sort of uh, reminded me a little bit of kind of Lindisfarne sort of feel. Um, Alan Hull, I guess maybe perhaps. Um, but yeah, I mean, they don't take themselves too seriously. Um, it isn't preachy in any way. Um, it's just very very nice nicely presented well written songs um this lady here has a very sweet voice indeed um there's a couple of covers on here um i believe the first track domination blues is a cover um and then on the second side um they do a really nice version of my man on love which uh is a judy sill song uh, that was off her first album so obviously judy sill writes a lot of material with a lot of strong sort of christian um christian imagery and uh, uh, and so on um so yeah fitting obviously very neatly in um uh, with this with this record so yeah anyway i'd just like to say uh thank you very much anyway martin um very uh, unexpected but very gratefully received thank you very much indeed um i will of course be reciprocating so lovely lovely stuff yep uh, and if you don't know martin's channel go and check him out um his channel's called the vinyl vinyl scavenger so yeah well worth checking him out Okay, another couple of records uh, that I uh, that I picked up. Uh, this one I've had for a few weeks, and uh, I didn't show it last time. Um, this is a wonderful, um, as far as uh, from what I've read, um, the first time it's ever been um, released on vinyl in its entirety. Um, this is the wonderful original television soundtrack of the adventures of robinson crusoe yeah and this is absolutely uh absolutely fabulous fabulous record um yeah so um 
yeah. It's by music by Robert Mellon, who's a, a British uh, composer, and he collaborated with Jean Piero Reverberi, Rever I think that's pronounced, uh, who's an Italian, um, uh, Italian uh, I think, band leader and, and, and orchestrator. And just, uh, yeah, just produced this just beautiful, iconic music that uh, once you've heard it, you it's just, you can't, you know, you can't picture the, uh, you know, it becomes kind of um, uh, synonymous with the, with the images, you know, you can't uh, think of one without the other. Um, and of course, yeah, Robinson Crusoe, um, from 19, I think it was 1964, I think, uh, uh, it was released in the UK in 1965. Um, I understand about two or three weeks either before or after Thunderbirds, for those uh, interested in little factoids like that. Um, but yeah, what a wonderful, wonderful soundtrack this is. Um, just beautifully evocative of the uh, of the series. Just the music just complemented it perfectly. Um, and uh, yeah, I um, watched this. Uh, well, I watched it because I think they were on uh, YouTube. Um, I'm not sure whether they've been taken down now. There's some of them are still on. Um, but yeah, I watched the entire series again um, quite recently. And uh, just just took me right back to my childhood, um, those uh, long summer holidays uh, where they used to, I think it was the BBC used to used to show it, um, and you know sort of you know every day you'd have another episode, and uh, you know so it'd be on for you know two or three weeks, and uh, yeah, just just fabulous, fabulous memories of a wonderful, uh, wonderful iconic. Series for people of a certain age, of course. Um, really nicely packaged. Uh, as I say, there's the gatefold. There's a lot of information about the making, uh, the story itself. Obviously, the making of the series. Um, forget the name of the guy who actually played the character. I think he was an Austrian actor, um, Robert. Uh, Hoffman, that's it. You would come to me. And uh, comes on this very appropriate azure blue. And double, double album. So yeah, really, really happy to get that one. Okay, and the next one uh, is uh, one that I remember Alan Static Traveller showed, um, I think a couple of years ago, uh, which is a kind of classic of the genre. Um, and uh, yeah, I've uh, got to be a bit careful because there's some nudity on the cover. Um, but this is Chikachus. So yeah, this is a uh, kind of uh, funky sort of uh, oh, Afrobeat, I guess, um, from the early 70s, 1972, I think. I think they're a Belgian band. Um, I think they did several albums. This is their debut. Um, and I think the song Stories... Um, which is the track that opens this album, um, has kind of been used for Grand Theft Auto and sample for various games and, and, and things. Um, it's sort of very funky and there's kind of indiscriminate kind of laugh, laughter on it and so on. Just really, really catchy stuff. Um, yeah, um, quite a short album, but great... Uh, Great themes um, and a great vibe. Really, really good, funky, upbeat stuff. Okay, um, then a couple of uh, CDs that I picked up. Um, 
This is one that I've uh, that I've, I've loved for many years. Um, used to have the vinyl of this, um, but um, I don't know, got purged at some time. I don't know why, because I've always loved it. Um, and uh, I've had a, a couple of the versions of the CD as well. Um, tried to buy this back. Um, unfortunately, uh, I couldn't. I haven't been able to find another vinyl copy, so picked it up uh, new on CD. This is uh, Velvet Underground and VU. So this is uh, 1985 release um, of um, previously unreleased recordings of the Velvet Underground from I think February 1968 to uh, it's over about an 18 month period, so about August September 1969. Um, really, really excellent songs, every one of them. Um, start uh, starts off with uh, the wonderful I Can't Stand It, uh, which uh, I remember seeing a real incendiary version of that performed live by the House of Love, uh, who also released it on a 12-inch single. Um, I think it was the B-side of I Don't Know Why I Love You. Uh, really, really great song. Stephanie Says, She's My Best Friend. Uh, lovely language number called Ocean, uh, which is really, really nice, really atmospheric, Foggy Notion. A uh, mate of mine, I remember, was obsessed with that, trying to work that out on the guitar. Um, yeah, and this is kind of the, the record that got me into listening to The Velvet Underground. Hadn't really been aware of them. I think my brother had kind of been into them before he had a copy of Loaded. Um, but uh, this is when I really started to listen to them uh, Big time. So yeah, really, really pleased to get that back in the collection. Okay, and the last one is um, is a really good album uh, by an artist that I've seen live, uh, who's a, a real force of nature live. Um, and uh, this is Nick Harper. Um, and this is his 2000 album, Harper Space. Okay, so um, it's interesting. I was actually talking to James Griffiths. Uh, uh, we met, were messaging each other the other day, and um, obviously, uh, in light of his uh, release of his book on Squeeze, and um, obviously, he sent me a, a clip of Glenn Tilbrook playing live, um, saying about what an under, underrated guitarist he was. And he was, he was playing. Um, uh, I think it was, uh, I'm not sure, it was a Jimi Hendrix number, I think it was Purple Haze, but brilliantly, and he was kind of playing it behind his back and everything and doing all this kind of stage trickery and, you know, sort of uh, antics. Um, but, yeah, obviously showing that he's an extremely accomplished guitar player. Um, I made a comment that obviously that, um, obviously that he'd perform with... Uh, and uh, recorded with uh, with Nick Harper. Uh, Nick Harper, incidentally, for anybody who doesn't know, is uh, Roy Harper's son. So obviously, I, most people are used to me showing Roy Harper, Roy's albums, because I'm a big Roy Harper fan. But I also really enjoy the work of his son. Uh, he's quite different to his father, um, but no less a musician. In fact, in in a lot of ways, he's a much more accomplished. Mus musician than his father um, plays sort of loud and guitars that are kind of uh, built specially for him with special tunings and he you know can tune up and tune down uh, multiple times in the same song while he's playing live uh, absolutely incredible you, you have to kind of see him live to believe him um, he does have a band called the Wilderness Kids as well which he's um, periodically kind of performs with in between his solo uh, solo uh, concerts but a lot of people I know would agree that he's to, to really experience Nick at his best he's uh, you know he, he doesn't necessarily need a band behind him he plays uh, in his own right anyway so um, this is a great album this was released on um, Glenn Tilbrook's Quicks, Quicks Otic Records label and um, this was the second of uh, two uh, collaborations with Glenn Tilbrook, uh, not in writing, but in terms of, um, I think, some management and production. 
uh, but he did. Uh, Nick actually did uh, tour with uh, with Squeeze for for a while. So uh, obviously, when they um, when they reformed, so yeah. But um, this has a song on it called "The First Time Forgot," which is the track that kicks off this record. And if you even if you don't know this album or you don't uh, you don't purchase it or whatever, just that's well worth just listening to that song because the lyrics are absolutely beautiful and it's just uh, um, at the time I heard it, it was one of the best songs I'd heard for years. Uh, absolutely fantastic. And uh, yeah, it's a real favourite of Glenn's and uh, I believe he uh, performs it uh, live because he enjoys uh, enjoys the song so much. So yeah, so that's Nick Harper and his 2000 album Harper Space. Okay, so that's it guys. Uh, just a really short one. Uh, hope everybody's having a great weekend. Um, I'm actually going out tonight for the first time for a long, long time. Uh, seeing a, a couple of friends I haven't seen for a while. Friends coming up from Guildford. This is the third time we've actually attempted to do this um, because for various COVID scares and uh, cars breaking down and so on, <laughs> we've been completely scuppered. So uh, hopefully third time lucky. And yeah, so looking forward to that. Anyway, whatever you're up to, hope you have a really great time. And um, yeah, I'll see you again soon. Cheers, guys. Take care. All the best. Bye-bye.